Matt joined our traffic team at the beginning of this year, and while our time together was far, far too short, his impact will undoubtedly last a lifetime. I've asked some of the team members here to share their memories and thoughts about what Matt meant to them. I have these for Liz, which they've written and will have Detective Bellamy personally provide to you so that you also have a tangible way to remember their thoughts. From one of our DUI officers, Matt was truly one of the good ones. He was warm and driven, open and honest. He spoke of his family with pride, and his primary motivation was to do all he could to provide for his wife and two young sons. We would go to lunch and convince him to try new things. I'll never forget how we loved to joke with him about watching him try to figure out how to use chopsticks. He was always quick with the wit and always able to make everyone laugh, even on the hard days. From his motor school instructor, I never heard Matt use profanity. I would tell Matt a funny story about something that happened at a crash or a driver I stopped and became acutely aware of my own bad language when he'd reply with, goodness gracious. <laughs> like, who says goodness gracious? Matt did. And without trying, Matt made me want to be a better person. From his fellow motor school student, Matt worked to patrol overtime one day, and I said we should grab lunch together. He agreed. I finally caught a break, and we met up to eat, but he only had a cup of ice water. When I asked why he didn't order anything, he said he'd already eaten the food he'd brought from home in his patrol car. He waited. He saved his lunch break, even if it was only to have a cup of water and spend time with me. God, how I am going to miss him. A few months ago, my apologies, uh, from the hyper one, a few months ago, we planned a home run derby with a local little league team. A few days before, Matt sent this picture to us all, telling how he was training hard and getting ready to kick some butt. <laughs> this kind of photo spoke exactly to his sense of humor and was exactly the kind of man and father I knew Matt to be. from our team's field training officer, FTO. I hope Matt's family knows when this is over, when the music stops and the flower vases are emptied, we want to continue to be there for them if they wish, to support and surround them with the love and kindness the way that Matt did for us. We weren't the only ones who got to know and love Matt. The following are three of the personal comments left by community members on our social media pages. Here is the first. Please take a moment to read their words. He left a mark that day on myself and my daughter's heart forever. Here is the second. Again, please read their words. When I drove off, I prayed that he would have an amazing day and continue with the great spirit that he had. 
And here's the last. He cared about his community and serving those in it. And I felt that with his compassion. As Matt's supervisor, I could not have asked for a better human. At the end of the interview process, I asked if he had anything else he would like to add. He sheepishly mentioned that he'd never ridden a motorcycle before asked if that was going to be a problem, <laughs> said, nope, and if you're selected, we'll teach you how to do it right. He was selected, he made it through motor school. For those who may be unfamiliar with riding, two of the hardest things to do on a motorcycle are to turn sharply and to ride slowly. So naturally, what's cop motor school gotta be? Sharp turns, very, very slowly, over and over. It's an essential skill for the job, but it's a very, very unnatural one to learn because it forces you to do things that your brain just screams not to. There's a 700 pound motorcycle about to fall on you, put your foot down, look down, run away. It's not easy for seasoned riders, and it sure as heck wasn't easy for Matt. He had the physical scars to prove it, and there were a lot of tough days. But he showed up each and every morning with a smile ready to go, often already making jokes about the mistakes he'd made the previous day. His positivity was contagious, his determination un relenting. I could see the determination in his eyes and the pride that welled behind them the day we took him out for his graduation ride and handed him his well-earned motor wings. Only months later did I learn that he and Liz had regularly been up multiple times during that period, helping their young sons through sleep regression and feedings. For those of us with children, I think we can all attest to the fact that most of us are not our best selves during those periods of sleep deprivation. And the fact that none of us ever heard him once complain about it during weeks of physically demanding, soul-crushing motor training speaks volumes about the type of man he was. Matt was kind. Matt let us constantly haul him new places to go eat different foods. Sushi, pad thai, stir fry, tikka masala. He was a good sport about it. He did it with a smile. He got these guys to try acai bowls. <laughs> Shared some garlic fries with me as we sat together at the Giants game. He even let me have the one last chicken strip all to myself because Matt was kind. He went out and looked for work on his own, stopped drivers, and took the extra moment to talk with them. He even wrote warning sites. Motors can do that. He wrote hundreds of tickets. Zero complaints. Because Matt was kind. As we all work, to process the painful loss of such an amazing man, I encourage you all to remember and honor Matt by approaching life and others, even when it's hard, the way he did, with a smile and by being kind. We love you and we will miss you, Mary Three. Thank you.